The war in Ukraine could end with agreements that Kiev will receive strong security guarantees, while Moscow will retain de facto, but not de jure, control over the occupied territory. Such a scenario is increasingly being discussed not only by Western, but also by Ukrainian officials, writes the Financial Times. The publication notes that neither Kiev nor its allies agree to recognize Russia's sovereignty over the occupied territories since this would only contribute to further Russian aggression and seriously undermine international law and order. Instead, it assumes tacit agreement that these lands will have to be returned somehow in the future through diplomatic means. Giving up land to gain NATO membership may be the only game in town, as one Western diplomat told us, but for Ukrainians it remains taboo, at least publicly, the Financial Times writes. As the publication notes, foreign policy circles have been discussing the West-German model for Ukraine for a year and a half. West Germany was in NATO since 1955, although East Germany remained under Moscow's control until 1989. The model as an option for Ukraine was mentioned in particular by former U.S. Special Representative to Ukraine Kurt Volker, former NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen and current President of the Czech Republic Petra Pavel. I don't think that full restoration of control over the entire territory is a prerequisite. If there is demarcation, even an administrative border, then we can consider it temporary and accept Ukraine into NATO on the territory that it will control by that time, Pavel recently said in an interview with a Czech newspaper. Recently, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that at the 25th meeting of Ramstein on October the 12th, they will present a plan for victory to all partners. We are preparing for Ramstein on October the 12th. This will be the 25th meeting, but the first at the level of leaders. We will present a plan for victory, clear, concrete steps for a just end to the war, he noted. According to him, the determination of partners and the strengthening of Ukraine are what can stop Russian aggression. Let us recall that recently, the representative of the U.S. State Department, Matthew Miller, stated that the states believes that the plan for victory presented by Ukraine contains productive steps. We received this plan. We looked at it. We saw it in a number of productive steps. However, according to Miller, the U.S. will refrain from discussing this plan for now since Ukraine has not disclosed its details publicly. Three people were injured after an attack on an oil depot in Feodosia of Russia. Presumably, two missiles landed there. According to Baza, five fuel tanks were damaged after the landing, two were completely destroyed, three more were damaged and are burning. Due to the attack, train traffic on the Vladislavovka, Feodosia section was restricted. Passengers of one train had to be transferred to buses. As a result of the attack, three people were injured, some were hospitalized. Earlier, the authorities reported that due to the incident at the oil depot, traffic was blocked on Geologikaskaya Street and Fedko Street. Emergency services are working at the scene. Meanwhile, a man-made emergency situation has been declared in Feodosia, local authorities, the oil depot continues to burn. It is not just an oil depot that is burning in Feodosia, but an oil loading port, on which the entire peninsula depends for fuel supply. This is a serious blow to the logistics of the occupation forces if they are unable to put out the fire and cope with the consequences. The oil base that is burning in Feodosia, JSC Marine Oil Terminal, is the largest in Crimea in terms of transshipment of oil products. This oil depot was already attacked by drones in March of this year. Later, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation announced that 21 Ukrainian drones were allegedly shot down over Russia and the temporarily occupied Crimea at night. It is noted that 12 UAVs were allegedly shot down over Crimea, 6 over Kursk Oblast and 1 each over the territories of Belharod, Bryansk and Voronezh Oblasts of the Russian Federation. At the same time, the morning summary of the department does not mention the burning oil plant in Feodosia. The Russian propaganda publication TASS reported that a man-made state of municipal emergency was introduced in Feodosia after a fire at an oil depot. Later, they clarified that the state of emergency was not implemented due to the fire at the oil depot in Feodosia, the city administration reported. A technical error occurred, the commission meeting has not yet been held, 
the authorities clarified, the message reads. By the way, it has been attacked for the fourth time in two years.